In the Pages panel, we not only see our pages, the pages of our document, it could be one, it could be a couple hundred, either way that's where they're showing. That's our, our sort of portal to getting to the pages quickly. But we also see what's called the master pages. I'm going to talk about that for a moment. The master pages are essentially containing anything common to the entire document, common to all pages, or common to some pages. So we can have multiple masters. Right now, when I click on the page beneath this line here, so if I double click on page one, for example, that goes to my content pages. This is where I'm actually working on my content. However, if I double click on this page up here, the A master, I've just gone into that spread. So I'm no longer in my content pages, I'm actually in the master pages of this document. And if I double click on the, the right one, it just means that I'm designating that I want to see the right page of that spread. Nothing changed because the view is the same. And there's a couple of indications that we have to remember here. Right now, I'm in the master pages and the, the A master title is blue. That's indicating that's where I am, that's what I'm looking at. And if I double click into my content pages, these page numbers are highlighted in blue. And the reason that that's helpful is because we can often set something on the master page and then start working on content. And the problem with that is that we're actually working on the master pages, we're adding content to the master, and it would essentially be going through the entire document. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm selected on my master page. So I'm just going to draw a circle. I'm just going to make a black circle on the page here. And we'll see that I've made that on my A master, on my main master page. And in the document, in the content, it's now showing on both left pages that are in those spreads. So it's gone into the content. And if I copy this over to the right side, then it's going on those. Now if I go into the content, one thing that's happening is these are on the master, so by default they're locked. I can't click on or select these. But there's a little trick. If we want to override items that are on the master page from our content pages, so override them while we're in the content, I can hold Command Shift and click on the item and that will let me override master page items. So it's essentially removing that item, that master page item from this particular page. I can also go into my master pages and I can say if I don't want this master, anything pertaining to this master to apply to this page or any specific pages, I can drag the none icon here onto one of those pages. So I'm going to do it on page uh, four, for example. So I drag the none and now it's not showing the items from the master page. When we do that though, we have to remember that if there's administrative content or other um, master page items that we do want showing, we're denying everything uh, that would be on that master page. So typically you're not going to be use, using the none too often unless it's you unless you know that you want strictly no master page items showing on that. Now I'm just going to go back in here and clean these off for a moment. Now one thing that we do on master pages is of course um, like I said it's content that's common to all pages or some sections of a, a document, a book, and uh, that would be page numbers. So I just noticed we have in the content here, we've got an item now that's been, uh, that's kind of um, been left behind after I deleted the items on the master page. 
So that's because I overrode this item. I unlocked it doing that command shift click. And then when I deleted the items on the master page, it was left behind because upon unlocking that, I denied it any real association with the master page in that regard. So I can delete this now. It kind of becomes um, a, an, a portion, a, a part of that page once I've unlocked it like that. So we're going to do some page numbers. And although we could make different masters, we can go in here and we can create a new master that has different content and we can apply that master page to other sections of our book or our document. In this case, we simply only need to do a single master because we're, we just have a four page uh, two spread document here. So we're going to do page numbers on this master. So I'm gonna double click on the master so that I know I'm working on that. And I'm going to make a text frame. So the reason that we're making automatic page numbers is because we don't want to have to in really any length of document we don't want to have to do page numbering if we're moving pages if we're doing a really long document like a book or a magazine we want all of that to happen automatically so this is a a small document technically we don't necessarily even have to have page numbers but we're going to have them for this assignment just so we can go through the initial steps of setting up master pages, working with um, master page items. And of course the page numbers are very common to that. So I'm gonna draw a text frame. Again, I'm working on the master page. I've activated that master. And I'm just gonna draw it anywhere for the moment. And I'm going to go up to my type menu and go down to insert special characters markers and current page number. So what this is doing, it's inserting actually code into the text frame. It's going to appear as the letter A because it's on the A master. But by going to the insert character function, that A actually represents code that the that is going to interactively work in the document. So that means that we can't just go into the text frame and insert the letter A. That won't work. This A represents something. It's got code behind it. So if we were to just go in and put the letter A, that wouldn't have that, that code that we would necessarily need. Now, this being a page number, of course we don't see the number, but we'll see what it's doing on the other pages right away. So I'm just going to click off, remembering to default to my main selection tool after I've used any other tools. I'm going to go into my pages. So there's page one. There won't be one on page two yet, and there should be one on page three. So it's already set. It's counting the pages. Now the thing with page numbers is we have to locate them. So I'm going to go back to my master, and I'm going to locate this just down outside of the margin for now. And it's good if you're working on books, you're working on magazines, it's a good thing to observe where page numbers are located. Um, we try to keep them out of content, of course, and we don't want page numbers infringing on where we place content. Page numbers are administrative items around the, the peripheral of the page, yet we don't want them too close to the edge, too close to the bottom, and so on. So we just have to be mindful of where we locate those. As well, they can be formatted. So although, again, we're not seeing the number here, I can format this. I can highlight it. I can choose any typeface I want, any color, any size. I can add some uh, design elements to them. So if, for example, I wanted to have a bar under this, I just chose the line tool there as an example. And I apply a, uh, a stroke weight to it. Well, this is an element that I brought in. It would have to be with this text frame it, when I copy it and move it to the other page. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to get rid of this actually.
But what we could also do in this case is we could add a what's called a rule under this. And we'll see that in later tutorials, what rules are and how we use them. But either way, whatever we do, if we're doing some sort of decorative aspect to the page number, it belongs to this set, this little um, content set that we're creating. So as a page number, I want to make sure that, of course, when I copy this over to the other spread, that it's in the exact same spot. And I've made it on the left, so I'm gonna what I'm do on the left, I'm gonna do on the right. It's good to give yourself some aspect, some indication of location, some easy way to place this. So what I like to do is pull, in this case, I'm pulling my text frame down to the page edge, and I'm gonna move it over. I'm holding shift when I move it. I'm holding shift and then I click and drag my mouse just to keep it in line. And I've got it at the margin. Now I'm going to hold shift down and do one left hit with my, actually I'll do two hits with my left arrow. So that was shift and two hits. I'll do that again. Shift, one, two, and it moves over. So now I know that when I bring it over here, I have some reference points to get it exactly where I need it. So I'm going to hold my Option key, Option and, oops, Option, and then start dragging, and I can add Shift into that to keep it in line, just to make that copy. So I'll do that again. We've seen that a few times in earlier tutorials, but we're gonna do it one more time. So I click it, hold option and we get that double arrow, that double cursor. Now you have to be careful when you where you um, put your cursor because in a small item like this, there's a lot of things for it to click on. So holding option and then I'm gonna click somewhere where it's not gonna grab a handle or another indicator and then I can start clicking. So I'm still holding option and see how it's moving up and down a bit? If I add shift into that, it'll lock into place. So I'm going to move that right over to where I had the other one. So at the margin and aligned with the bottom. And then I'm going to do shift and my right arrow this time, one, two. Now the A is over there, it's aligned to the left. So I need to highlight that and align it over to the right of that box. So that's very important when we're setting up the masters with spreads because we want those items to be in the exact same spot on each corner of the spread. And it just takes a little bit of um, giving yourself reference points in that regard, not just placing it and hoping that you get it or eyeballing it. And of course you can use numbers. You can literally place it by the math, by the x, y axis, through locations that way, but you're doing reverse on the other side. So it's much easier to just find a spot, do an incremental move to the left, which we did with the shift key and two left arrows, and then do the same thing over here. Different designers have different ways of doing it, but the most important is the objective is to get it in the exact same spot in the corners. Now, once you've added those, we'll go back into our content and they should be there. Now there's a, a trick with these that's, it's not even a trick, it's kind of an annoyance, but we have to do a little trick to get around it, is when we get into our content, sometimes you're going to have a full page image and you want those master page items to be on top of it. Well, right now the master page items are, although in the, um, in the pages panel, they're at the top, they're actually under all of our content. If I put content on here, they're going to be underneath. So for example, if I want to have a footer at the bottom of this page, I'm gonna just make a box and I'll co color it so I'm in my content area and I make that colored box. So now we see, well, 
if this was a footer that I had, I don't want my page numbers hidden. I need to see them. So if I select this box and I go to arrange, thinking, okay, well, if I send it to the back, then it will go away. And I'm sorry, I have to select that and click and find my arrange. And I don't have my arrange here. So I'm just going to go to the object menu and arrange. And that's why it wasn't there because there's nowhere for it to go. So I usually use the key commands when I do send to back and so on. So sometimes I have to search out for a range, but either way, it wasn't here because there's nothing to arrange. And when I went to the object menu and went to arrange, it's grayed out because there's nowhere for it to go. It's the only item on the page, which is misleading because we think we have a page number on the page, but we don't. That page number is on the master and it's showing here. So we can't even send this behind the page numbers. This is where we have to create a layer and name two layers. I'll explain that. So our master page items are, you can almost think of them as being a part of this page. And we have a layer in our document, a default layer, and that's what we're working on. When we go into our content, we're working on that layer. So we're going to make, we're going to do first, make a new layer. So we're going to go to our layers palette. If you don't have that open, you can just go to your window menu and layers. And I'm going to make a new layer by clicking this new layer icon beside the garbage can. Now I'm going to go up to my master pages. So in my pages, I'll click on the master, double click. And I have to double click because if I don't, I'm not activating the master. So I double click so that I know I'm in the master pages. And I'm going to select everything on the master. In this case, I can just do command A. I only have two things. So I do command A. It selects this one and that one. And I'm going to move these to this new layer that I created. And the way I'm going to do that is grab this little indicator here and you can see what it says indicate selected items and I'm going to drag it onto layer two. Now those are indicating in red layer two has a red indicator so I know they're on top of this layer. Now the reason I did that was because initially when I had one layer although I had master pages and different pages I had a single working layer so the content had to be somewhere had to be on that layer but when I did my master pages and we can see you can see a little bit of the content there in when you open these layers when I did my master pages because they're almost like part of the skin of the the content pages I have to get those onto an independent layer so that they're always above that content. So I'm going to double click on this layer and I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it master pages or page or I can get very specific and call it a master. Um, it just depends how you name it is up to you but you want to know that you're naming it in accordance with what it actually is. So I'm doing it so that I know, okay, well, those are my master page items. And then I'm going to double click on this one and just call it artwork, or you can call it content. So then, because I don't want these master page items to move, or I don't want them, I don't want to accidentally continue working on this layer. So even if I go back into my content, I'm clicked on this layer and I start working on that layer, that I don't want. I want this layer to be exclusive for my master page items, so I'm going to lock it. I'm gonna click right here and lock that. Now, if I tried to work on it, it tells me, you can't work on it, this is locked. So I go, oh yeah, right. I gotta click on my artwork and content layer, go into my content, and then I can work. And we can see when we moved our content to that master page layer, making sure that master page layer is on top. Now our content shows above all of our, our, our page numbers show above all of our content. 
and anything that I put here in the content on the artwork layer will be beneath my master pages. Now that causes one more consideration that we have to remember. If I go back to my master pages and I start working on them, I have to, or I want to change something, edit the content on the master pages, change color, whatever, I have to make sure to unlock my master page items so that I know that I can actually access that and make the changes that I need to make.